Global Vapor, and also I think a ting, uh, King Tokes. I don't know if uh, Neo One Eight Seven Vapor, still here. and also I think a ting, uh, King Tokes. But thank you for the follow there. I don't guys. know if uh, Neo. All right, cool. So it should be streaming for everyone. Um, I am now streaming. If you do not see me on video, then close out Twitch and restart. All right, cool. Right, so yeah, as you guys, uh, as some of you guys know, if well, actually, I don't, I don't know if there's anyone in here yet, so I gotta wait for people to come on over. But so the yeah, there we go. That right there. That wait, I gotta point that way. That's weird. That's so backwards. I'm pointing at the wall, but and that my monitor's over there, so it just feels weird. Anyway, that right there is what we're gonna be doing. That is, we're gonna be giving away a free grow light today. So yeah. That's going to be awesome. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this is working right, because sometimes I notice that, let me try to go like this. I notice sometimes when I'm on here. Oh, look at that. Mike, Mike Matei is live right now. Oh, well. I guess I'm going to miss his live today. I just saw his last two, so that's fine. So I'm just waiting for people to roll in here so we can start doing what we're going to do. Hey, what's up, King Tokes? Hey, appreciate, yeah, appreciate it. I saw that you followed. Appreciate the follow. You know, um, you probably didn't get to see it because I wasn't live yet, but uh, when you follow it, this little guy rock and rolls with a guitar on the screen. It's kind of cool. It plays a little, little sound effect, but you didn't get to see that part. I, I saw it, though. And hey, what's up? What's up, Mick? Welcome to the to the live stream. So we're going to be doing a, a giveaway today. So after after we get some people in here and stuff, maybe like maybe in about 20 minutes or so, just give everyone a chance to be here. I'm going to go invite everyone from YouTube. We'll be doing a giveaway of a grow light. And I'm going to go look it up right now so I can show you guys what it is. It's, it's back in the box. I'm not going to take it out again. Uh, but I did, I did a par testing. The average par is uh, 436 for 4x4. Four four. So it doesn't quite cover 4x4 four four because the um the edge the very or the like towards the corner edges it drops down below 50 um, in some of the corners uh, one of them it, it was like 70 that's barely a, that's barely adequate um, 70 70 par isn't gonna really do nothing it might give you little fluff balls um, I know with my lights you know 70 will do all right um, you can get little decent little nugs there but anyway so 70 is pretty bad None of my lights have 70 in, in, in anywhere uh, in the 4x4. That's really low. I really don't want to go below 100. So I would say it doesn't It doesn't truly cover 4x4. I'd probably use it for a 3.5x3.5 or maybe even a 3x3. It uses like 430 watts. And uh, so that's kind of a bummer too. It's basically just barely, it's barely more powerful than my Dwarf Star as far as average par goes. But it uses twice as much electricity, so it's an it's an okay light. It's not the it's not the worst out there. It's it's definitely better than a lot of those lights you can buy on Amazon and stuff. So it's a pretty good light, brand new. I think it costs like two hundred something bucks. So, yeah, Nick Nick donated it. Um, Nos is uh, his nickname here, and so that was pretty cool. Let me go. Ahead. I'm I'm over on the other screen right now. So give me just a second. I'm just inviting everybody. Um, so you go to my live videos. If it'll load, there we go. Got it up. Click on this video here. All right, cool. And I gotta tell everyone where to go here. If this video is still up, then I am alive. Come check out the show and win a LED grow light by clicking here. And then I'll get my Twitch channel over here. And then I'll get my Twitch channel. <laughs> okay, cool. Just a second. Almost, almost done. Almost done. Got to copy that real quick. You know, I could actually just show this on camera. Huh? That would be more interesting <laughs> to watch, I imagine. At least you can see me do what I'm doing. Oh, by the way... Um, 61,000 61, subscribers on YouTube now, so that's awesome. 
everyone that follows me on YouTube and so or su subscribed on YouTube, much much appreciated. That is awesome. Um, yeah, especially since I I had to restart the channel many years ago. Uh, so because I already, I already had built up like twenty thousand follower or twenty thousand subscribers, and then I, then I got uh, paranoid and shut the whole channel down because all everyone was getting shut down and stuff. And I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna shut it down. And then not that long ago. Uh, maybe like a year ago now or whatever, uh, YouTube actually shut my channel down completely. Luckily, they didn't reset everything, so I still had my followers and stuff. But that was a big hit because most they shut me down for like a month or two, so no one knew I was on there anymore. I had started a Vivo account and everything, and anyway, so it was kind of cool that they gave my channel back. And uh, yeah, so much, much appreciated. It's, it's it's only thanks to you guys that the channel you know, came back and, and is where it is, so that's pretty awesome. Alright, so I send out those invites. Hopefully everyone's coming on over. I'm going to try to find this light. Let me go back over here like this. And by the way, if you guys have any questions about growing marijuana, feel free to ask them. We'll be doing the light giveaway probably in like 20, 30 minutes. I just want to give everyone a chance to come on over here. Is it Friday? It is Friday. Hey, thanks for the follow there, T.Y. Shtick. Tie stick. Oh, there you go. Tie stick. That's kind of a cool play on words. It's like stick as in funny, but stick as in tie stick, like the marijuana. I think that's what you're going with there. In Russia, your videos are up on YouTube, but cannot open your channel. Do you mean, Josh, do you mean you can't open the channel here? on Twitch. Well, if, if, I guess if you can't see me, then uh, <laughs> you're not hearing my question. That would make sense. Try to restart Twitch. I am live right now. Okay, so, excuse me. All right, let's go look at uh, Google real quick. Is Nick, Nick's probably not here? Um, oh, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube is YouTube is down right now. Like the video, I only went live for a second on YouTube just to let everyone know that I'm over here. So I think it was called Flies. All oh, cool. There it is. Go See, I love Google. Look at that. Google remembers that I typed this word already. Flies on. That's what it's called. All right, cool, Josh. Okay, so Flies on is the name of this light. Let me let me try to find the exact one that he donated for you guys or for one of you guys. One of you lucky winners out there. Um, it's not that one. It's not black. And it's not that. I don't think it's this. Yeah, it's not this one. It has cobs in it. So, Let's see if I can't find it here. Yeah, it's not that one. It's not that one. Hmm. Let me see. Maybe it's. Uh, I'll type fly zon cob. This is basically a a generic a generic name. It's not it's not really a real website. It's not really a real uh, grow like grow company. So what happens is China makes a lot of these lights, and in order to try to keep things relevant on Amazon, they continue to make new. Um, I think I found it right here. I think that's it, isn't it? The fly zon Cree cob series. So what 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 these what these China like most of these lights are made by like three manufacturers in China. So here, here's a little knowledge that I have that I've learned over the years because I work a lot with China for different parts. And so China has like three main manufacturers. Most of them are in Shenzhen, Shenzhen, China. And what they do is they make these like generic lights that are, you know, inexpensive and stuff. A lot of times they'll say it's a Cree cob or something like that, but it's not actually a Cree cob. If you actually open the light up and pull the thing out, it, it won't say Cree on it. Anyway, uh, some of them actually do use Cree cob because so, some Crees are a lot more a lot more affordable now, like the older older technology. But they won't be using the latest technology. Anyway, what they do is they there's like three of these manufacturers, and to stay relevant on Amazon, they they do these pop up type companies. So they'll make a little company, they'll give it some generic name like Flies On or whatever. Uh, some of them actually stick around for a while, sometimes for five years even. Uh, but they, they, they ride that company as long as they can, and they sell these lights for really inexpensive, and most of them you know aren't very good at all. And this one's okay. Uh, so I think this is the one, isn't it, right here?
Are you meaning that? Oh, you're asking Josh. Okay. So it's advertised as a, as a 2000 watt LED. I'm not sure why it advertises that way because one, it's not equivalent to 2000 watts. That's for sure. Nowhere near it. Um, it it's not even equivalent to a 600 watt, to be honest. Um, actually, may, maybe a 600 watt HPS. It, it might it might be able to do what a 600 watt can. But even even a 600 watt covers the edges, but the corners better though. So I still think you'll get better yield out of a 600 watt HPS, just because this thing doesn't cover the edges very much in a 4x4. And those readings are definitely not accurate, because I I did my own I did my own readings, and these readings are not accurate. This is not this is not what it actually reads. This is pretty close the corners, but rather it, the corners are actually much lower than that. These numbers right here are more like 50 to uh, 70, but they're right about here, or right about here, sorry. So that where it says 270 right there, actually, let me see, is this is this claiming a 4x4? Maybe it is accurate. Maybe it's not claiming 4x4. Does it say how many feet? Oh, okay, never mind. This is only claiming 3x3. Three three. Okay, this actually might be accurate for 3x3. Three three. But you see that even in a 3x3, three three, see the corners here? That's not good. See that right there? You want at least 100. And and these don't even give you these don't even give you 100 in the corners, so even for a three by three, um, yeah that that that's kind of lame that even for a three by three it doesn't cover that very well. Anyway, it uses like 400 and uh, they they say actual power for 450 watts. There is no light in the planet that can run 450 watts and be equivalent to 200 or 2,000 watt. It's just it's impossible. Not going to happen. And that will probably never happen until we get some crazy new technology that we can use very little energy to, to have a lot of output. It's going to take some new technology to ever achieve that. Right now, that's, that is absolutely impossible. For, you know, for example, um, hey, thanks for the follow there, Jane. For example, my, my light, the Max Yield, that uses 650 watts, 640 watts, somewhere around there, it's equivalent to a double-ended bulb 1,150 watt light and that that's insane that it can even keep up with that I, i'm actually really surprised because it uses like half the electricity and actually does that but there's there's no way it can be even close to 2000 watts that that, that would be that'd be, that'd be crazy so that's a really wild claim but nonetheless it has an average par of 435 i, I don't know if you're here for that nos so we did that we did the average par test for four by four and it has an average par of uh, four, like I think it's like four six or I'm sorry, four thirty eight, four thirty six, somewhere around there. So it's actually not too bad. Um, the downside is that when when you get toward the corners, even before you reach the corners, it already drops off below a hundred. Um, so imagine that this. Hey, thanks for the follow there, Alien Source. Much appreciated. Imagine that this was this is for a three by three, but imagine that these readings are for a four by four. You see where this two seventy is at. At a, at a four by four, that same measure, that same spot, is is at seventy and fifty, depending. Like there's like a seventy here, a fifty here. I think there was like a forty here, and then like another fifty here, something like that. So it's pretty low on uh, toward the corners. And when you get way out to the corners, it drops down to almost zero on, on a four by four. And this is their readings on a three by three. This seems about accurate actually, from two feet away. Um, that's about what the middle was and stuff. So yeah, this seems this seems accurate for a three by three. But yeah, I think it'll I think it'll do fine in a three x three. You can even use it in a four x four. Um, you might be able to get a little bit more weight out of it in a four x four because those you know th those buds on the edges are still going to grow to something. Uh, they're not going to you know get super big or anything. But you might be able to get ones that are that are hard enough to actually be you know capable. So anyway, yeah. So this is the light we'll be giving away later, just so you guys can see it. This is uh, this one looks different though. See how this one looks mostly all red. I don't I don't think I don't think the one that you donated is all red like that. I think it's like red and blue, isn't it, and some white. I think that's what I remember when I turned it on. I could swore that's what it looked like, because it has it's it's actually closer to my spectrum. It looks more like more like white light. So, but yeah, so not 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 bad. I mean, like I said, my dwarf star will produce pretty much what this one will, and my dwarf star only uses 240 watts. This one uses twice the amount of electricity to pretty much do what my dwarf star does. Okay, yeah, stock photo. So that that's something to think about. You know, th th this will this this will potentially produce a little bit more than my dwarf star. Like if you were to do a side by side grow, this sh this should produce more than my dwarf star. Not much, but it will outproduce my dwarf star a little bit. But it's using twice the electricity to do that. So that's kind of that's kind of lame. 
But yeah, anyway, so. All right, cool. Yeah, so anyway, if you have any questions about growing marijuana, please feel free to ask them. Hey, thanks for the follow there, Goose. Much appreciated. Yeah, I think you should you should be able to get 12 ounces out of it cuz I can get that I can get that off my dwarf star. So you should be able to get 12 ounces for, you know, out of it. But it depends on what those two what those two autos are. Autos aren't, you know, necessarily big yielders, so it really depends what those two autos are. If if one of them if at least one of them is a big yielder, then you should be able to get 12 ounces. All right, cool. Hey, what's up, uh, IW? Yeah, so what we're going to be doing is uh, in about, I don't know, I'm not sure how long now, maybe in another 10 minutes or so, we'll go ahead and do that light giveaway. I really wanted to give give everyone a chance to come over here, but the thing is, um, you know, if I, if I go too late, then a lot of people will be want to go to bed and stuff. So I'm thinking, I don't know, I'll, I'll see. Right now we got 25 people in here, so we'll see if uh, some more people show up or not. But yeah, stick around because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing the light giveaway. So yeah, stick around for that. So for pH up and pH down, Mick, I use pH down for pH down. You can also use vinegar and uh, lemon juice, so either one. The downside of using vinegar or lemon juice is they don't, they don't last as long. Like they don't continue to keep the pH balance as long. They they're they're easier to buffer. Basically, the the natural buffers in water buffer out vinegar and lemon juice much faster than it does pH down. If you want to get like if you want to get stable water, hey, thanks for the follow there. Much appreciated. If you want to if you want to uh, get ni a nice stable water, let's say you're making like a five gallon bucket of water and you want it to stay stable for a couple days, where you don't have to keep pH pH downing it. What you want to do is when you when you make your bucket of water, pH down it all the way to 5.2. Hey, thanks for the follow there, uh, James. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Thanks for the follow. So if you pH down it to like 5.2 and then wait overnight, to like wait like like right before you go to bed, make your batch of water, pH it down to 5.2. When you wake up the next day, it should be at 5.8 because the natural buffers in the water and stuff are going to bring it back up, and that will that will help it keep keep stable for a lot longer so that, that way that if you don't use it all that day the next day when you use it again it shouldn't go up very much if it does go up it might go up to 6.0 uh, which is still fine you can still water again uh, without having to pH pH it down it again so and then for pH up Mick I use uh, silica I actually don't use I don't use pH up I use I use uh, silica it doesn't really matter the brand um, all silicas will that at least also because I've ever tried will pH up because um, naturally uh, pK boosters are naturally more neutral so that if you're if you're at like 5.3 they're gonna bring that back up where you want it at so um, basically phos phosphorus and uh, potassium especially potassium is an up it, it, it brings it well it's not it's not I think it's more neutral but it's going if you're at five point you know if you're at 5.5 or whatever it's going to bring it up so it's not gonna it's not gonna keep it acidic like that, and so that's what I use for pH up. Um, for example, if you use liquid seaweed, which is mostly potassium, and ha it has some phosphorus in there as well, but if you use liquid seaweed, it's going to actually if you if your if your pH is at about like five point eight or something like that, it'll actually bring it up. So it's not gonna it's not gonna leave it at five point eight. That will actually bring it up higher. I have to test and see exactly what it is. I forget what the exact pH is on it, but, but it doesn't matter because we're trying to reach five point eight. And so the only time you use pH up is if you go below like 5.6, you know, then you want to bring it back up to 5.8. And most likely that's not going to happen unless you accidentally put in too much pH down. So you just got to get used to how much pH down to put in so you don't overdo it. But if you ever do, just use, I would, I would just use silica and it brings it right back up. Or you can use pH up, it's up to you. I, I like silica because it adds some benefit to the plant as well. No, silica will bring it up. Excuse me. Nas says, can you explain nutrient ratios? 
I have noticed when I mix per a normal feeding schedule, my PPM ends up around 400, which is fairly low. How would I adjust this but keep the correct ratio between the nutrients? Well, so um, what I do is I, I'll figure out, you know, what, well, first of all, I always put three milliliters of CalMag, in, no matter how much I'm feeding with. Three milliliters, of cal, three milliliters of CalMag per gallon, that goes in regardless. So when I make a batch of water, even if I'm only going to be feeding it, you know, like, 0.4 EC or 0.5 EC, that, that is, you know, what, and for that first 10 days, I'm not feeding it much nutrients. So the ratio is the ratio between nutrient and, and CalMag is much higher, uh, much higher uh, CalMag per nutrient for the first 10 days. So I don't change that. That stays the same the entire grow. So that three milliliter stays the same. So the ratio changes as I add more nutrients. So the first 10 days, I'm feeding three milliliters of CalMag and very little nutrients. And then from days, you know, let's say 11 on to um, whenever I decide to bump it up, then I feed a little bit more nutrients, but still three milliliters of CalMag. And then once I start getting toward, once my plant is big and I can tell it can handle more nutrients and I start hitting it with, let's say, 0.8 EC, which isn't very much, by the way. I'm using psychoflowers. So I don't have to use very much. It's very, it's very efficient, and I feed it every day. So, uh, let's see here. 0 0.8 times 500, so that would be 400 ppm. That's what I feed most. By the way, most of my veg cycle is only 400 ppm. That's all I feed my plants. That that that's after everything's added. That's after the three milliliters of CalMag, and that's after my my nutrients are added, which I just use base nutrients. So. You know, grow grow A and B and CalMag is all I use for for that part of the grow. Um, yeah, so that's how I do it. And sometimes I'll sometimes during veg I have to bump it up to 1.0 EC, which is 500 uh, ppm. And then during flower I've been going up to about 1.2, sometimes even 1.3. But even 1.3 is only 650 ppm. So I don't go over 650 ppm during the entire grow ever. That's all I feed my plants. And it's because I'm watering them every single day, and I'm using psychoflower nutrients, which is very efficient. It's very broken down, and they, they can use it a lot easier than other nutrients on the, on the market. Can you use this on autos early, first three weeks? Yeah, Mick, I don't treat autos any different than I treat photo periods. Everything's the same. And uh, here's, my, here's my feeding charts, Mick, if you haven't checked them out. If you type uh, exclamation mark chart, that's the link to my uh, feeding charts. And I also go through all the logic on, on, on that page on how I, how I figure out how to make my nutrients. So you can use that page to create a feeding chart for any nutrient brand. It doesn't matter what brand it is. Pick any brand you want and you can use that. You can use that page and it gives you the logic on how to make your own feeding chart. So it's, it's really easy. Let's see here. Um, what do you think about using yeast and sugar as a CO2 generator? It's a waste of money. Long term, it's a waste of money. Basically, you're 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 asking, you know, making alcohol, and I've tried it before. I've I've done it before, and I had a lot of alcohol, <laughs> because you you'll you'll be making a lot of alcohol doing that. Uh, I was using five gallon, five gallon um those you know those water containers that you put up you put upside down, into the drinking things that work and stuff. So I was using those five gallon things. To make my wine in and uh, yeah I was using champagne le yeast I was using turbo yeast even and the turbo yeast it does uh, produce a lot a lot of co2 kind of um, on a pretty consistent basis but it only lasts like a week in the grow room if that because it's so warm in the grow room that it just it, it uses up it, it just it goes so fast and then you have to add more yeast more sugar or you have to dump it and make a new batch um, so you're gonna, be, you're gonna be wasting a lot of money on sugar and on yeast in fact, you'll use more money on the yeast and sugar than you would be if you just bought a CO2 generator. The CO2 generator is the cheapest way to produce CO2 in a grow room. It is the absolute cheapest way. I've, I've tried all the methods. None of them are as cheaper. Um, now, the initial startup for yeast is cheaper. You have to, you have, to have the money to buy the CO2 generator. Um, well, not the generator, but, you know, the regulator and the and the and the tank which you can buy used for like 300 bucks or even less sometimes actually brand new you can buy them for 300 dollars uh, you can buy them for less than that used so definitely look around used so it, it is an initial startup cost but the long term is much cheaper 
within a year it'll pay for itself if, if you're doing any other method I tried dry ice I've tried um, those those mushroom things that have that have mushroom fungi in there and none of them those don't even work at all um, <laughs> like literally the, the best co2 if you can't afford co2 the best way to get your plant co2 is to go in your grow room you produce so much co2 if you only spend like 15 minutes in your grow room you'll you'll raise your grow like go in your grow room and close it off spend 15 minutes in there you'll raise the co2 to like 2000 or close to that way more than the plants actually need and then you go out and you close it up and that co2 will stay in there for quite a while if you're doing a closed system so if you're doing an open system don't even don't even bother with co2 also in my book in my book and by the way if you want to check out my free grow course just type in uh, exclamation mark grow and that's the link to my free grow course and in my free grow course and also in my grow book mainly in my grow book hey thanks for the follow there uh, what does that say dame the untamed so if you if you go to my grow book I actually go through um, different grow methods you can use to um, get free co2 from your house anyway How do you find find a measure for a one fifth teaspoon? Um, so I guess if you're using like some sort of powdered product and you want to figure out what you're, you're trying to, or you're trying to figure out a liquid product and what one fifth of a teaspoon would be in millimeters or something. So if I remember correctly, I think it's one milliliter, one milliliter per. I think there's five milliliters per teaspoon if I remember correctly. Um, I think that's right. Let me look it up. I think that's right though. Five milliliters per teaspoon Let's see here how many milliliters per this is how you this is how you find out by the way you just use Google it tells you everything you need to know yeah so you can see it it's just about five so about five milliliters per teaspoon so um, in other words one-fifth of a teaspoon would be one milliliter so that's how you do that thanks for the follow there job Walker much appreciated What do you use to keep away or get rid of spider mites? That's a good question. I'm just looking down here to see if I if I if I did miss any other questions, uh, let me know. Let me see here. Hold on, I'm gonna go back to that one in just a second. Uh, I mixed like a potash my whole res for this week, but I already fed it last three days prior. Will it damage the plant using potash for ten days? No. Um, when I when I use potash, I often will put it in there. And by the way, when I use potash, I don't calculate my PPMs off of that. So I bring my I bring my PPMs up before I add potash. So if I if I'm feeding at 1.2, let's say EC, then I add all my nutrients to 1.2, and then after it's at 1.2, then I add my then I add my potash. So I don't count the numbers on my potash, and I just use I think it's like half what it recommends on the bottle. But anyway, so um. When you when you do the potash, I usually do it for like a week anyway, because I put it I put it inside my drip my drip tank, and that usually lasts about a week. So yeah, it's fine. You can use it, you can use it the entire flower process if you wanted to. It's just kind of a waste. Yeah, t yeah, ten minutes in the tent. It really we we produce a lot of CO two. It's a, it's quite amazing actually. Let's see here. Um. I'm trying to go back to what was that question again that I said I was going to answer oh yeah keep away spider mites so there's, there's several different methods you can use for um, keeping away spider mites one you want to practice certain things that will make it a lot harder to get spider mites so basically you probably don't have spider mites in your house if, if you're growing if you're growing indoors you probably got spider mites from outside somewhere. What, you know, one of your plants outside had spider mites. Maybe you walked by a bush, you know, it's, it spread onto your leg, and then that went into your grow room. So just try to be careful when you're outside, not to not to rub against bushes and things like that. Just know, hey, if I'm about to go in my grow room, make sure I didn't go outside and rub against stuff. So that that's that's a good thing to do, is just try to stay mindful of what, you know, what what you what you're doing before you go in the grow room uh, that day. Another thing to do is to spray your entire property with a bug a bug spray. 
So go go to go to like Walmart, or whatever, and buy one of the ones that attaches to your hose. There's different there's different ones. I usually buy the black bottle. I forget what name that name brand that is. But it's just a general general bug spray that kills everything. Just make sure it's one of the ones that kills spider mites. And it'll kill aphids and all that kind of stuff. And just spray all your property all the way around your house with that, and that will get rid of you know the spider mites. You want you want to spray that for three times at three days apart. So that, that's how you want to that's how you want to get rid of spider mites. So spray it three days later, spray it again three days later, spray it again, and do and do the whole perim perimeter of your property. And anywhere where you like to walk around your property, just make sure all that is sprayed really good for you know three times three days apart. That should get rid of all the spider mites outside, and that really does help. And just do that like you know every six months or something. That really keeps the populations down outside. It makes it a lot harder for you to bring stuff in indoors. And then um, once you once you do have spider mites indoors on your plants, it's kind of hard to get rid of unless you dip your plants. If your plants are too big to actually dip them, and you can use organicide. So there's a good product called uh, Three in One Organicide. Let me type that in the room real quick. Uh, there we go. Three in one organicide. I think that's the one. Let me let me go ahead and check and make sure that's the right product. Make sure that one does bugs. Organ oh organocide. My bad. It's with an O. So three in one organicide. Uh, I guess they might, they might have changed the name. It used, to say, it used to say organicide on the bottle. Insecticide, fungicide, and meticide. Yeah, this is the one right here. So use this. This this works really good. This is what I usually use. It's organic. So anyway, um, you want to add the amount it says to a to water, but you want to put it in a bucket of water, and then. You want to take the whole plant, turn it upside down, kind of hold it so it doesn't fall out, and dip the whole plant inside the bucket with this stuff in it. Leave it there for about five seconds. Shake it around really good. Make sure it gets in all the nook and crannies, and then pull it out. You want to do it with every one of your plants. Now, if your plants are too big to do that, then you got to spray them really good with this stuff, and I mean really good. You got to spray under. You got to spray on top. You got to just get all the nook and crannies. It's a real pain in the ass to do that, and and it's still no guarantee. And you got to do that every every three days for for three times so once three days later second application three days later third application that should get rid of the spider mites now if you're in flower you can't i don't i don't recommend you could use this i just don't recommend it when you're in flower if you're in flower and have spider mites if they're really bad you let them go too long first use a vacuum cleaner use the wand on your vacuum cleaner not a really powerful vacuum cleaner don't use something like a a wet vac you'll fucking destroy your plants but use a regular house vacuum cleaner use the wand and then put the the top on it that has the fuzzy hairs on it you know what I'm talking about it's like it looks like that and it has all the fuzzy hairs on it the brush type attachment use that and then lightly just very lightly go over all all the where all the spider mites are and suck them all off of that first and then control them with like milk water um, you can control them with a little bit of soap water slash a little bit of oil um, I just don't like spraying my plants with oil when they're in flower you can just make obviously whatever you're going to spray with you're going to be washing the buds anyway um, if you because if you have to spray your plants during flower then it means you have to wash them when they're finished and uh, anyway so yeah that's how you can control them and you might have to spray every day you can actually spray with just water believe it or not you can control spider mites with nothing but water so get water pH it to um, like 5.8 or you can do you can, you can pH it higher if you wanted to you can pH it to like um, 7.5 you know go, go more alkaline with it maybe even 8.0 and spray that every single day if you spray with that every single day you can control the spider mites you won't get rid of them but you can control them until your plants are done so that's right, you know, any one of those methods during flower will, will be fine. And then once you're done, you want to cut it all down, wash all your buds, and then you want to clean out your entire grow room, spray everything down really good, make sure all the spider mite eggs and stuff are killed by cleaning everything with bleach water and make sure everything's dead before you start your next grow. And I would also wait like a week before you start growing. After you clean everything down, put don't put any plants in there. Wait like a week to make sure everything's died, and then you can go back in there again. Okay, I don't know how many questions I missed there. <laughs> My wife says hi, everybody. All right, there we go. Stay tuned. We're going to be doing that marble 
marble run for the grow light. If you have a question for me, please do me a favor and write three at signs in front of it. So I know that the question's for me because I see a lot of the people talking to each other. Just to make it easier for me to find it. So, so if I missed your question, please ask it again with the three at signs. So Nas says, I want to raise my EC. Can I go back and add newts after they are already mixed for a few days? Yeah, you, yeah, that's fine. Not a problem, Nas. You can always add more nutrients back to your, your reservoir or to your bucket, whatever. Yeah, King, that, that was, hopefully I already asked that. Or hopefully I already asked. <sighs> Let my brain slow down. King, hopefully I already answered that question for you. About the prep to do to not get spider mites. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Hey, what's up, Cuban Surfer? Welcome to the chat. All right, cool. So if I did miss your question, just do the three at signs like this before your question, and then I can go ahead and answer that. Oh, you know what? While we're doing that, let's. I'm kind of curious. Does Rob work yet? I want to see if Rob works yet, because that was the one game we couldn't, the one mini game that we couldn't get working in here. Remember, we got the duels working. We got the. Uh, what was it? We got the. Um, Free for all was working. Boss battle was working. I want to see if Rob works yet. Let's see Rob uh, twenty. Oh, maybe I have to do. Maybe I have to actually put a, a a mount. Let me see if that works. Oh, that's what I was doing wrong. I forgot to put the amount I want to try to rob with. So if you guys want to rob with me, I'm trying to get a team together in order to hit the nearest bank. Everyone can join. In order to join, type Rob and then the amount that you want to risk. So I recommend just 20, 20 uh, is good. Uh, some of you guys might not have 20 yet if you're new here, but if you've been here before, actually you've been here, if you've been here for like 20 minutes, for every five minutes you get like one bit. So I don't know, you might not have enough yet if you only, if you only started today. But yeah, go ahead and, uh, so put a space between it. I don't think you have to, but just in case, make sure it works. Let me see if it, let me see if it joined you or not. Let's look at this right here. So here's the heist. Oh, I don't think it's going to show me who's actually in it or not. Yeah, for some reason, I don't think it'll... It's, I, think, I think it's supposed to give you a message, but maybe it doesn't give you a message whether you're in it or not. You have to... Oh, hoax, you have to do uh, exclamation mark, Rob. How, how, see how, how everyone else is typing it? If you do exclamation mark, Rob, and then space 20. Yeah, spider mites, uh, they're really hard to see with the naked eye. Uh, you can see adults with the naked eye. They'll usually look like a little speck. Um, and sometimes they're kind of like see-through looking. And you'll see them moving. If you just if you take your leaves and look at the underside of your leaves, you can see the adults moving around. They're kind of hard to see sometimes with the naked eye, but you, you could usually see the, the bigger ones. However, with the loop, if you use a loop, they usually hide out. If you look at the underside of a leaf, how it has the... I don't know what, it's, they're not veins. What are those things called on the underside of a leaf? It's, it's basically how the nutrients are transferred through the, through the leaf, but it's got the lines like that, the five lines for each, you know, one for each leaf, the, you know, I don't know, whatever that's called. That underside of the leaf, if you, look, if you look with the loop right along that, that's usually where spider mites like to hang out. But let me show you what they look like. So when you look under a loop, you're going to see something like this right here. This is what, this is what you'll kind of see like that. That's when they're bigger, but oops, if you have a good loop, you can actually see more detail than that, which would look more like, so if you have a good loop, you can actually see them like this. Like you have a good, like a good electronic microscope that you hook up to your phone. With a hundred times just regular, regular glass loop, like a hundred times glass loop, you're probably going to see them something like this. Maybe a little, you might be able to see them a little bit closer than that. Let me see here. Um... This is when you got spider mites really bad. You, you can actually, if you get spider mites really bad, 
you'll actually see the webs. They do create webs, and you'll actually see the webs. Um, I, my my uh, brother-in-law one time let spider mites get so out of hand that his buds were covered in webs, and it looked just like this, a big pile of spider mites on top. It was disgusting. So we just vacuum, vacuumed them all up first, and then we sprayed the shit. And anyway, it was pretty bad. But yeah, don't let spider mites get out of hand. You can easily control them by just spraying them with water every day. All right, let's see here. Um, man, my lips are still wanting to peel, and I've been drinking water like crazy. I use chapstick every day, all day, drink water like crazy, and still my lips sometimes feel like they want to peel on me. Some bullshit. What's up, Neil? Is it okay to defoliate in week four of flower on a photo? I wouldn't do that. I mean, you can you can do it. Um, I would I would only take a few a few leaves off every day that absolutely need to be taken off. Uh, I recommend doing all your defoiling before you go into flower. So once you decide you're about to go into flower, defoliate, do your lollipopping, do all that shit, and then go and then let it let it um, recover for a week, and then switch to twelve twelve. That's how that's how I recommend doing it. But you can remove stuff during flower. I just want to, I wouldn't remove branches. You can remove some leaves. I just wouldn't remove too many uh, per day. You don't want to like stress it out. Okay, can you press the button on the TV controller? Oh, no, no. Is it going? Yeah, just one away. Alright, scrolling back down for you guys here. Let's see. On your last Twitch cast, you were telling us about different tent plant layouts for max yield. Can you go more into detail? I want to pull 1 to 1.5 pounds from a 5x5 tent and 5 to 1 pounds on a 4x4. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Cuban Surfer, I highly, I highly recommend... I, I go, th I show different layouts in my books. So if you want like the the details in my book, I go through the different, things you can, the different ways you can set up a, a tent inside of your house to get free CO2. Um, and then, and then, yeah. But in that last video, I, I that's the basic way that I set up my grow room. So basically, just want a good a good AC. I like using a window AC. I, and I, you know, I told how I did that in that video. And then I, you want a dehumidifier. You want a little a little space heater, and uh, you want a CO2 meter, CO2 tank, and you want a good thermometer that also tells you the relative humidity. All right, did we rob the bank? Casualties has fallen, but the remainder of the team managed to make it out. Let's see who made it out. Results on the heist. Grow pot cheaply. Yeah, I won. So there. Josh won. Keith, IW, and Deadman. We all successfully got away. Cool. So basically, I, I risked 20, and I doubled my money. That's what we did. So if you risk 20, whatever you risk, you're, you're going to either lose that. If you don't successfully rob the bank, you lose the 20. If you win, you win 40, so you get your 20 back plus 20. So you're basically doubling your money. So double or nothing is basically what it is. Yeah, I haven't I haven't found any of the predatory mites to actually work. They work okay outdoors because outdoors has a lot of other stuff for them to survive and stuff, but I just even outdoors I don't find them all that useful. They they will they will definitely help keep the population down, but it's really hard to build up a good population of predator, predatory mites, for example. And and I've tried different ones, you know, and you and I I've looked to make sure they're all alive, you know, before I put them on my plants and they were all alive and stuff, but and I had at this one time I actually had spider mites. They weren't they weren't very uh, you know colonized because I was keeping them under control by spraying with water and stuff. But even though I released the predatory mites and I released them right on top of them, it was just like they just they just don't do a very good job. I mean they kept the population down, but they they never got rid of them.
And the, pred the, the, the I used a couple different types, and the pre one predatory spider mite I used, they actually breed and produce faster than the, the spider mites, so they should actually overtake them and, and kill them all, but it never happened. I, I, I gave up on all that shit. I found that the best thing to do is is not get spider mites in the first place. Practice practice safe measures to not get spider mites, and if you do get them, I the, the ways that I described it, dipping the whole plant in veg is the best way. If you get them during flower, then uh, I would just control them until you're done with your grow by spraying every day with water or something. But yeah, that's I just I don't know, I just don't like the predatory things. They don't work very well. Is it common to have two plants of the exact same strain react totally different to the same nutrient feeding? Yeah, that can happen. Like if they're if they're two very different phenotypes, that could happen. But um it, that's what I, I would imagine is the phenotype. Uh, there's very, very different phenotypes. And some of these autos, auto companies, they, um, like, that's why I like Dutch Passion, because Dutch Passion is, is, they take the time to actually stabilize their genes before they sell seeds. So they make sure their strain is stabilized, meaning that you're not going to, you're not going to see very many phenotypes, and they're all going to be very similar. Uh, other, other seed companies, they, it almost seems like they just, give out the first generation they don't even bother trying to stabilize their their strain so you're going to get all kinds of phenotypes and it's like it's almost as if their different strains are so far apart and yeah so that's why that's why i love dutch passion like i know what i'm going to get when i when i when i grow their stuff it's going to be pretty much the same thing every time cuban you're referring to the actual plant uh, plants layout bucket size etc yeah i also go i also go into that in my book as well um, you know di different layouts you can do with bucket sizes, but basically one, one of the easiest ways to do this with photo periods is to grow nine plants in three gallon buckets or three gallon pot buckets three gallon pots The number three pots so They're called number threes. So they're not actually three gallons to figure out what that is in liters you got to first figure out the difference between media medium and uh, water and I think it's three times point seven yeah, three times 0. 0.7. So that's actually 2.1 actual water gallons in American water gallons. And then divide that by four. So it's at, oops. I think that's how you do it. No, is that right? No, sorry, times four. Yeah, so 8.4 liters. So basically eight liters. So grow in eight liter pots. So number three pots. Do nine plants. Uh, let them grow. Top them once to get four tops. And then let those grow a little bit and then top those to get eight tops exactly. So that way each each of your nine plants will have exactly eight tops. Let them, let them grow tall. Lollipop them if you need to. If there's any like lower branches at that point. There shouldn't really be any, any much lower stuff that you really have to worry about. Um, put nine of them underneath one light. And that should give you uh, two pounds. You should be able to get two pounds off that with the right strain. Yeah, Azimax is super toxic, and uh, if you use it indoors, just keep in mind you're spraying your house with a super toxic chemical that's very dangerous to your health. Make sure to wear the appropriate equipment. Make sure you wear the long gloves. Make sure you wear clothing that you're gonna you're you're gonna you're gonna throw away because you don't want to use that cloth. You don't want to put that in your because the mist is going to get on you if you spray with Azimax. Mist is going to get all over your clothes. I don't recommend washing those in the washing machine at your house. I recommend throwing them away or, or save them for later when you want to spray again. So get, get special clothes that you know that you don't really care about and that you can, you can store for later. Either throw away or you can store to use them again if you ever need to spray again. And yeah, treat it like you're, you're spraying a toxin because that's what you're spraying. That stuff is, is very poisonous. You might not see the effects in the first 10 years of using it. It might affect your health 20 years later, and you get cancer or something. It's just super not good stuff. And and just think about that. You're putting that on your plants. If you absolutely use, if you do use something like that, uh, like Azimax or or Flor Flormite or was it called? Is it called Flormite? I think that's what it's called. If you use a, a poison like that, use it during veg, and make sure that yeah, just use it during veg. Period. Don't use it during flower, obviously. 
and it, it should work its way through the plant by time you know it's done. Uh, fast buds, fast buds is fine. I like Gorilla Glue by Fast Buds. That's a really good strain by them. They don't yield very much, but they they finish very quickly, and it's really good, really good quality. Have I ever seen a calyx grow to the size of peas? Um, pretty close. I would, yeah, pretty close. I mean, I've seen them get really, you know, swelled up really big. Like I thought they had seeds; they were so big, but they didn't have no seeds in them, so. Yeah, yeah, Nas, go ahead. You can go ahead and send that. I'm gonna look. Up, I'm gonna look up Azimax. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm thinking of. I could have swore that's what I'm thinking of. Let me. Let me make sure. Or if I'm thinking of a different chemical that sounds that starts with an A sound. I must been. I must be thinking of a different chemical, something else with a different name. Yeah, I must be thinking of a different a different chemical, a different name. I'm not sure what I was thinking of then. I have to think about it for a second. What's what 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 spray was I thinking of? That's really poisonous. Because like Floramite I used to use many years ago. Um, Eagle something. I think it's like Eagle 20, something like that. I could have swore there was one with an A that, that's the same type of really, really not good chemical. I have to think about it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, there there are there are things that are organic, but just just really quickly looking over it, it didn't look like that was really that dangerous. Azomite, that thank you, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, thank you, IW. I was thinking of azomite. That's the one. Yeah, treat azomite the same way you would fluoromite. <laughs> Yeah, azomite is, the, azomite is the bad stuff I was thinking of. PS4 controllers are kind of crappy. Most of the time, Sony really does makes a really good product. I have to say their their PS4 controllers are not a really good product. The DualShock controllers, the right trigger often goes bad on you so there are certain games like Metal Gear Solid 4 and if that trigger goes bad it won't work on Metal Gear Solid 4 because you can't you have to push it super hard it's basically just not not working correctly the yeah it's just shit and another thing that goes bad the d-pad goes bad quickly on these things Th this one I bought I bought this one brand new and like after like maybe six months the d-pad stopped working good like I, it, I can't throw fireballs correctly with this thing anymore and then also the left analog stick goes bad. So when I'm when I'm playing Call of Duty, if I'm trying to run, it constantly just stops running on me. It, this piece of shit. So I bought a new one. Again, I should I, you shouldn't have to buy controllers like every every year. <laughs> you know, old old controller like PS3 controllers, man. I have old old ones and they still work excellently. So I don't I don't know what they did differently this time, but they dropped the ball with their controllers. So I bought one that was produced in 2018. So hopefully they fix those issues because I know I know there's, they've gotten a lot of complaints. So we'll see. I made I made sure that the one I bought was produced in 2018. So I bought a, I bought a newer one that's been produced recently from the manufacturer to make sure that hopefully that will be a good one. 
No, the light giveaway is still going to happen. I was giving I was giving people a chance. It's giving people a chance to come in, and uh, so it's, I've been streaming now for 55 minutes. I think that's long enough. I was going to do the first. I was going to do it after like, like 20 minutes, but I want to give everyone a chance to get in here. Well, no, I mean silica is fine. I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't use very much silica. Like I, I only use silica if, uh, if I need a pH up at all, and we rarely ever have to do that. There's some organic, like when we were doing organic, for some reason that stuff was really acidic, and uh, the three in one or the three in one um, liquid seaweed and fish, also the Alaska fish, those are really acidic, and so they bring the water down too low. We'd have, we'd have to use silica to bring it back up. But if you're really worried about it, just use pH up. Could I use fiber insulation that has tiny fiberglass fibers in it to replace rock wool if I had nothing else? I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't use fiberglass. Or something with fiberglass fibers in it. Yeah, stick with rock wool. If you don't have rock wool, buy some cocoa. You can just do little you know, little little four by four, those little things you buy at nursery at nurseries, little black pots, little square ones. The four by four, the four inches by four inch ones, and just put some cocoa in there and start it that way. All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up the marbles now, so we can do this uh, do this light giveaway. Let's go ahead and get that get that going. This is the light that. This is what the light looks like. And this is all this. By the way, if everyone wants to take a take a quick time to thank Nas. NOS 0630. This was donated by him. So he donated he donated this light to the Twitch stream so that you guys can uh, have a chance of winning a grow light. So that was pretty cool. Alright, let's go ahead and start this up. I might I might lag for just a second or or freeze up. Don't worry about it. I'll be right back. Sometimes when this game starts up it'll freeze my thing. Cool, it looks like everything went smooth. See if it signs me in. Go to race. Random. There we go. Oh, cool. I didn't realize I can do that. Oh, cool. Okay. Let me see, can I stretch this out? Ah, oh, it's really it's really finicky. See that? It's like trying to stretch it. Come on, there we go. Oh, badass. Okay, we can make this a little bit bigger, folks. There we go. Let's go ahead and fill this up a little bit. There we go. Nice. Cool. Didn't realize I can do that. Alright, so to enter the race. You want to type, well, you, you can see what people are typing. Just type that, exclamation mark, play to enter the race. And this will be for the grow light. If, if whatever reason you don't need the grow light and you win, you can say pass. So, for example, if Nas wins, he's going to say pass because he donated the light, so I doubt he wants to win his own light back. So if you already have grow lights and you don't need grow lights, I recommend passing so that someone that does need grow lights can win. And so if, if the winner passes, we'll do another race and then until someone says take. If they say take, then that means that they're going to get the light. Let me know if my stream quality goes down for you guys. Right now everything looks like it's, it's good, but if it goes down, just let me know. All right, cool. So we got a lot of people entering. I'm just giving everyone, giving everyone a chance to enter. Exclamation mark play. So I'm seeing a lot of names. <laughs> this is the most. This is the most names we've ever seen in a race. So this, that, I guess that's what happens when you're giving away a grow light. All right, cool. Looks like it looks like everyone that wanted to enter looks like they're entered.
Yeah, there's alien source right there. All right, you guys ready? You guys got 10 more seconds if you want to enter the race. 10 more seconds. Exclamation mark. Play. The race is on. This would be an intense one, guys, because we're about to win something really cool. This is going to be an intense race, I think. Let's get it on. Who's in first place? Slow motion. This is an intense one, so I'm going to go slow motion a couple times. When we get down to the bottom here. And slow motion. Looks like Dig comes out first, followed by Cuban, followed by Evo. Let's see what happens. And Alien Source comes up. Oh, Lemonhead. Oh, never mind. Lemonhead's not racing right now. The blue, the blue names, the blue names are. That that means that Lemonhead won in the past on this track. Lemonhead has the fastest time on this track right now. Ooh, you hit the you hit the Steve. Evo. Oh, Evo gets caught up on the Steve, giving a chance for someone else to catch up and take first. Cuban Surfer hits the Steve. Who? Oh, Cuban Surfer, and Job Walker comes out. Oh, it's intense, guys. Everyone's going down, down the sieves. Let's go slow motion. I want to try to see who comes out of this first. Who's coming out of this first? Looks like maybe Job or someone on the other side. Who's coming out first? <laughs> and the heat is on. I can't tell. Hold on. And looks like Mick. Oh, Mick comes out first. Look at that. Mick came out of the things first into the steves again mick slams evo db cuban surfer uh oh cuban surfer might take this one nope nope he gets stuck up and does a does a trick on the half pipe there and it looks like looks like dame hitting into hitting into the i don't know i don't know what that is mixer <laughs> into the mixer steve oh cuban surfer gets bounced through the mixer steve oh cuban surfer does a does a kick flip off the berm and it looks like Cuban Surfer came out first there, going through the lumpy lumps. Buda, 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 buda. Uh oh, look at this. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Is he going to get hit by the poppers? He misses the poppers. He's going down. And Cuban Surfer comes in first. Look at that. And look at, look at a Cuban. So think about the irony here for a second, if you will. Think about the irony here. I think Cuban Surfer just typed, not right, right before we started this race, he just typed, I haven't won a marbles race yet, referring to the fact he doesn't have my book yet. So he doesn't have my book yet because he hasn't won a marble race. And, you know, he can't afford $7, and, and that's totally understandable. And now he wins the grow light. So I think that makes up for it, doesn't it? <laughs> that makes up for it, right? Because... You've been playing this game, trying to win a grow book. You don't win, and then you're like, I don't, I haven't won yet. And then when you finally do win, it's the biggest prize ever. That's pretty cool. That that was pretty close there, man. I, I was I was really wondering who was gonna win. It went back and forth there a little bit. Oh, and by the way, if anyone wants to donate any sort of object to the Twitch channel for me to give away to like just like we're doing this right here feel free to let me know if you have anything you want to donate just let me know what it is at neilfontaine at yahoo.com I'm going to type that right now so just email me there let me know like hey I have well you can't donate uh, illegal products like Bud but if you want to donate you know um, a brand new pipe you can do that you can donate uh, fans like grow fans you know, inline fans, you can donate lights, you can donate pots, you know, things that um, w would make sense to ship. Like, obviously, a, a $3 grow pot wouldn't make sense to donate because it's going to cost us more money to ship it. You ship it to me and then me ship it to them than it would for them just to go buy the grow pot. <laughs> but as long as it's uh, something, you know, I'll, I'll let you know if I think it's a good, a good thing we should give away. And then uh, Cuban, also, if you will email me on that email way fast to make sure I get it real quick. So if you just take the time to email me at neil.fontaine at yahoo.com and then let me know that you just want, that you're, that, let me know in the title that you're Cuban Surfer and obviously that you won the grow light and then let me know your address and stuff, where to send it. Oh, you know what? I, I forgot to mention, if you do not live in the United States or Canada, 
you're going to have to get a ship it to account for me to ship it to you. So if you don't live in the United States or Canada, go to shipitto.com to get a ship it to account and then and then they'll give you an address, an American address, and then I ship it to them and then they ship it to you. Keep in mind regardless, um, if you're not if you're if you're living in Canada even, you'll have to pay taxes on the on on the product as well. So if you're not in America, you're going to have to pay custom, whatever your customs taxes are. And for some countries that's pretty high, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, we'll be we'll be doing we'll be doing uh, future giveaways. I might actually. Um, so right now, I've been doing my giveaways on for my for my grow lights. I've been doing my giveaways for my grow lights on Patreon.com. And if you guys aren't looking at that, um, here's what I'm thinking of doing. Let me go. Let me go to my Patreon real quick. Uh, Patreon. Log in. Oh wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Log in, there we go. And actually I, I need to I keep forgetting to do the um Yeah, I need I need I need herp and give away that light. I need to do a random giveaway for my Patreon followers. Anyway, so here's the Patreon page, and what I've been, what I've been doing is I'm trying to we're trying to get up to five hundred dollars a month on Patreon. Once we get to five hundred dollars a month, every single month I'll be giving away a, a grow light. But until then, I begin I've been giving away a grow light like every three months or so. Um, so right now we're at, we're, at, we're only at $75 a month right now with 25 patrons. And so I've been waiting about three to four months before I give away a light. And uh, that's what I've been doing right now. But what I'm thinking about doing is if Twitch continues to get popular and takes off, um, like right now, let me see how many Twitch followers I have now. Right now I have 155 uh, Twitch followers. So slowly but surely people are starting to come over from YouTube over here to Twitch, which is awesome because I really want to build this Twitch community up. And so what I've been thinking about doing, oh, and by the way, if you guys want to do another race, um, I can do another race for like a copy of my book or something. But anyway, so w what I've been thinking about doing is, is instead of doing Patreon, I've been thinking about having those people come over and subscribe on Twitch. Because it's, it's kind of the same idea where if you subscribe on Twitch, one, you don't get commercials on Twitch on my channel. So right now when, when you're watching my channel, if you're not subscribed, you'll notice that you'll get like a 30 minute commercial when you first log on to watch me live. It's not, it's not too big of a deal. You don't get commercials all that often, but it's still kind of, it's still kind of irritating to get, to get commercials. So that's one thing is, uh, is the commercials. So if you subscribe to my, if you subscribe to my Twitch channel, that will get rid of the commercials. So that's kind of cool. But also what I'm thinking about doing is Instead of doing the giveaways on Patreon, I'm thinking about just um, having that on Twitch. So have have all the Patreon users instead of doing Patreon, have them subscribe to Twitch, and then every and then once we get enough subscribers, I can give away lights every month. And then and then until I get enough subscribers, I can still give away lights like every three, you know, three to four months or whatever. All right, Cuban, I'm gonna go ahead and check that really quick just to make sure it went through. Oh, wrong one. Let's see here. Go check my email. Mm, it's not that one. Ah oh, man, look at all these, all these ones. I'm gonna put spam on those. Spam on this one, on this one. Oop, not. not that one. Let's see here. Spam. So I don't, I don't see it yet. I see, I see Nick's email, 
Maybe it hasn't gone through yet, Cuban. Oh yeah, look at how much that one stretched, Nick. That one stretched a lot. So Nick sent me a photo here. He sent two, but I'm going I'm to look at this. The other one doesn't want to show much. I'm going to look at this one. So here's a photo Nick just sent. Oh, by the way, if I missed any of your guys' questions, feel free to ask it again. Just do the three at, at symbols. Yeah, I'm just, I was trying to go back and see if I missed any questions. But if I did miss your question, just go ahead and uh, let me know uh, what the question was and just re-ask it again in the chat room. I can close that out now. So I imagine that this is the one, the one on the left, Nick, is the one that's not trained because it looks like it already went through its stretch. You know, interesting, interesting. Um, if the one on the right is the one you've been training... And these are the same exact strain. It looks like it's taken a lot longer. It's it looks like it's several days behind. It looks like it's a week behind is what it looks like. So maybe this one got stressed out a little bit and and, and flowered earlier. Or it this it, this happens sometimes. I've had this happen to me where exact same strain and one one just took off a lot faster than the other one. But the other one will catch up. But you can see it's gonna be a lot bushier. So once this one does start to stretch, it'll be a lot bushier than this one. Oh, this is actually LST? Is it wider than this? It looks very narrow to me. This one looks wide. Like, see this one, over, the short one? This one looks wide. I know before, maybe the top-down view would make it easier to, to... It's hard to tell, like, how far that bud is compared to, like, say, this bud. Okay, so from, from a top view, is this, is, is this bud, like, far away from this one? I imagine from the top view, it looks more like this. Opened up more. Yeah, it's really hard to tell from this view. But this one, this one here looks like it, I can't tell from this view either, but it, this one looks like it should be bushy to me, the one on the right. Looks like it'll just naturally be a bushy plant. Unless it's, you know, unless it's just short because it's, uh, ha hasn't gone through its stretch yet. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, damn it, why is this thing? I gotta, I gotta, do I have to restretch it? Hold on, let me see something. I just want to see if there's any of the track that's cut off here. No, that's pretty much the whole thing right there. Let me see something. Hold on. I'm going to go back over here. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pull this like that. How come I can't adjust that perfectly? There we go. Okay, cool. There we go. I just want to make sure we can see the track as good as possible. Oh, Josh. Josh robbed the bank again <laughs> and won some money. Cool. So he must have bet 30. All right, I'll, I'll check that right now, Cuban. No, Keith, if you wanna if you wanna post a video to a grow, that's fine. All right, I'm checking. I'm checking my email again here. Okay, cool. Yeah, I see, I see it now. All right, cool. Thanks, Cuban. I, I got I got actually got, I got both emails, so it just took a, it just took a second for the other one to go through, but I see I see them both now. So, awesome. I I should have a tracking number for you soon. Nice. 
and you'll, you'll end up getting it pretty quickly too because because of where you're at and proximity to me you should get it within like three days after I give you a tracking number Shammy says have I ever made my own feminized seeds with clodial silver not with clodial silver I've done it with some, I, I actually this might actually have clodial silver in it I, I never actually looked at what the ingredients were but I, I use something because a, a buddy of mine uses this and told me about it and it, and it works really good uh, let me see here what it's called again I, I showed it in the in the chat before let me see if I can find it again I can never remember how it's spelled, so I'm just going to type what I usually spell, which is I usually spell sound out tree see us, mist. And that usually, yeah, it usually comes up. This is how it's actually spelled, though. There you go. It's T I R. Oh, yeah, tire and then see us is how it's spelled. But yeah, this stuff right here is what I use. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat here. So that's the stuff I use. And just follow, you just follow the instructions. It's pretty easy to um, use. So what I do is I just spray off one. I just I take one branch and I kind of close it off with a, a plastic sack from like Walmart or something, and then I spray it on that only on that one branch, just so I don't get overspray because I just want the spray to be on that one branch only. You do it for like two to three weeks, and then it'll cause male flowers to grow on that one branch, and that and that will be feminized pollen. And then that when that pollen pollinates the rest of the plant, then all those seeds will be feminized seeds. And they'll be, you know, that you can get your own auto flowers that way and so forth. They won't be as stable as, as the actual seed company seeds. The, the I found the most stable ones. If you're not going to actual breed by, breed back breeding back in with the mother and stuff like that, which takes a few generations to get a, a new stable strain. If you just want to get some, you know, free seeds for future grows, basically, what I recommend doing that will give you the most stable seeds possible, is to seed the same plant that you're that you're causing to stress out so let's say I, I have one plant and it's it's auto Colorado cookies I would spray the one branch on the auto Colorado cookies and then once that starts having male flowers on it I will let it pollinate itself so I'm going to pollinate the exact same plant that has the male parts on it so only one branch I'm going to spray I'm going to use a paper sack or something to block off when I spray so that the overspray doesn't get on the rest of the plant that way just that one branch has the male parts on it and then I'm gonna I'm gonna basically uh, use that pollen to pollinate the rest of that plant, and then just make sure that that plant is separated somewhere, because pollen can travel a long distance. So make sure that stays somewhere that you're not gonna pollinate the rest of your plants or whatever. And then uh, once that plant finishes, let let it go longer than usual. If it's an autoflower, let it go like 90 days, 100 days, however long you need it to go before those seeds are nice and ripe. So you, remember, you're only using that plant for seeds. So let it go as long as you want until those seeds are totally done. And the seeds should naturally fall out. Like when you tap the plant, the seeds should just start falling out naturally. Uh, some of those seeds on the bottom and stuff. Once that happens and the seeds are ready, then you can go ahead and harvest it for all the seeds. And then if you want to use the plant for oil or something, you can. But that just one one autoflower plant will give you a lot of seeds. Those seeds will last you a good while. Hey, no problem, Mick. I'm glad the book has helped. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, let's go check out this photo really fast, and then we'll do another race here for a copy of my book. So, everyone that wants to enter for a copy of the book, feel free to. Right now, we got oh, we got quite a few people waiting for the race to start. We'll start that race soon. If anyone else wants to enter to win a copy of my book, it's or do you just want to play just to play? Like I said, if you if you don't want the prize, all you have to do is to say pass. Hey man, am I driving okay? I think we're parked, man. I love that part. Oh yeah, okay, I, I can see now. Yeah, you can see that it's a lot. This one's, yeah, that, that was, yeah that, that, now I can tell it's definitely a lot wider. But look at this one. This one is naturally growing very bushy. 
So if you haven't done any training on this one at all, it it is it must be it must be just a naturally bushy plant. Like the phenotype must be a, a bushy plant. What I would do is I see this leaf right here, this leaf, that leaf, that leaf, and this these these two leaves right here. I would either tuck those in or just pick them off. See these these big leaves right here? Pick off that leaf, that leaf, that leaf, that leaf, and that leaf. If you pick those five leaves off, these other buds will, will have more light and they'll get bigger. And then I would just do some very light bulb training. Just lightly just lightly pull out these branches. Just so that it can, you know, continue to get light in the inner inner side here. It also looks like um, Either the light is too close to the. See how these top only these top leaves look like this, and this see how this one's closer to the light, and it's just this looks like light burn right here. So I would move this plant over over here off to the left a little bit, or I would raise the light and then then raise this plant up a little bit on top of something, put it on top of another pot or something. That that way that way both plants are around the same height. So I would raise the light and then lift this plant up with another pot so that it's about the same height, and that will help. But yeah, you, you, it looks like this one's getting a little bit stressed out. I have not used Shatter Batter. I don't even know what that is. There are so many products out there that I've never even heard of. I'm, gonna, I'm just curious what it is. Oh, that's interesting. What I have done, though, I wonder does this does this does this just add flavor to your to your oil? Looks like that's all it does, right? It's an innovative product that allows you to. Sh Take your shatter wax and essential oils, dissolve your product in shatter batter and vape it as either. Okay, so basically it, it makes it thinner, so not only does it add flavor, but it makes it thin enough so that you can run it run it in your in your vape stuff, like your vape pens and everything. What I have done before is I've taken I've taken the zero um, vape oil, the, the zero that has no that has no nicotine in it. I've taken that and added it to oil to give it flavor. So we, we tried that before, like different flavors, and then it get, it makes your dabs taste like it has flavor to it, and, and it works it works pretty good actually. I have it growing uh, cream cookies by Fast Buds. It's one of the ones I do want to try soon. I haven't I haven't tried that one yet, but um, I know their grill their Gorilla Glue is uh, light sensitive. So it's really cool if you if you actually don't have a really powerful light, Gorilla Glue is a good one to grow because it doesn't like a lot of light anyway. And if you grow if you grow Gorilla Glue with my lights, you want to keep it like two and a half feet above Gorilla Glue, and then you want to feed with a little bit less. Actually, if if you feed exactly what I've been with what I feed with with Psycho, that should be fine because it's actually a pretty low amount. But if it gets too green, then you can just back off the nutrients a little bit if it gets really dark green. But yeah, anyway, Gorilla Glue is a really good one to grow, but I haven't tried the cream yet. I do want to try it soon. Yeah, you can see Otto's Cuban. You know, auto flower seeds are really expensive, and so it could save you a lot of money if you seed your own. And and the way that I described it earlier. I don't have I don't have any of my own autos. Oh, oh, you're Aussie. Never mind. Sorry, I just saw you. You're asking that to Aussie. Yeah. So to join the race, yeah, you're in the race now. You, you typed it. You type exclamation point play. So you should be in the race. Are right, you guys ready for this? Let's go ahead and start. You got ten more seconds if you want to join the race. The race is on. Five more seconds. Enter. And. We're off. All right, here we go. Who's going to enter in this circle first? You know, I just realized I'm not entering the race. I should have entered. Oh, well. 
You can see my name there, but that's not that's from an older race. So it looks like I had the best time. On, oh yeah, that's right. I won this track. So I have the best time on this track right now. All right, we're going we're going into the uh, sacred the sacred butthole. And Josh comes out of the sacred butthole first. No, actually James came out first. I didn't even see that. James is going to bank right. Who's going left? Josh goes left. They're they're almost neck and neck. James has a little bit of a lead here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on James Ball. Oh yeah, we're going through the we're going through the shit here. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Zoom back out, see what's happening. Who's in second? Josh is in second. And first is oh Nas comes comes and takes first. No wait hold on that's not right. I didn't think so. James is still first. Sometimes it it gets confused when it goes around the curly cues. All right, we're entering the snake turns. And the speed boost. Uh oh, is James gonna fly off? No, it looks like the speed boost did not fly him off. We're hitting the speed bumps. And we're gonna go into the into the sieve now. Slow motion. ITZ lands first. Who's going to come out of the strainer? Oh, ITZ, look at that. Right away comes out the strainer. Okay, what's going on? That's not what I want to look at. It's it's confused as as to who's in first, so that's why it's it's geeking out. Come on. What's it doing? It doesn't know who's in first right now. All right, so we got a bunch of people going down this part here. Let me go. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. See if I can't see. Ah, well, let me zoom out. Come on, who's in first? Okay, there we go. James came out of all that hectic crap that you couldn't see nothing. We're going left. Nas is right behind you. Oh, we're at the end though. We're at the end here. Oh, he he decides to do a trick off the berm. Another trick. Another kickflip. And will James still get it, or will Nas fly in? For, nope, and James gets it. There goes Nas. Nas must have got stuck on something. And there's third place, and here comes the rest of the racers. Here's sixth place right here, ITZ. Boom. All right, cool. Good race, James. James won, so you can, uh, you can type pass or take. Take means you want a copy of my book. It's a digital... A digital, a digital copy of my book, or you can say pass if you don't need the book, you already have it or something, and that will give somebody else a chance to win it, and we'll do another race. All right, cool. So James will take. Please send me an email, James, to here, neilfontaine at yahoo.com. So send me an email there, and just in, in the... Uh, in the subject title, just say, you know, James, and uh, that you, you know, basically in the in the subject, just say like James, and I want a, I want a I want a book, something like that, so I know it's you. And then I'll go ahead and send you. I'll go ahead and send that over to you. We'll we'll do one we'll do one for, for nothing this time. This is just this race is for practice, just for fun. If you guys want to enter the race for fun, let's see if anyone's interested interested in that. Exclamation mark play if you want to enter for fun. I'm going to join this time. Ooh, I like I like this one. I like how it starts. See all that? That's a, it's got the diamonds. It's got all the pegs. That's a that's a good pegboard. I like that pegboard. Exclamation mark play to enter for fun oh, right now right now hot dog we have nothing growing right now we're, we're about to start our next grow here I'm gonna be we're gonna be starting a photo period uh, most likely blue dream by Humboldt seeds and then we'll do some auto flowers I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did last time I'm gonna grow a few auto flowers like two to three auto flowers while maybe even four just depends which ones I decide to do while I'm doing my photo period and so that way, when the autoflowers are done, my photo period will have been vegged for, you know, a good anywhere from 80 days to 100 days, depends how long the last autoflower takes. And then I'm going to switch, then I'm going to switch the room over to 1212 and finish off that, that photo period. 
I think this photo period we're going to do something like mainlining. We're going to we're going to top it all the way down, and we're going to train the branches to go sideways, and then keep keep training them down and topping them, and try to grow like a really long eight foot long vertical plant or horizontal plant. That's the goal. All right, is it, it Nos? Is it spreading that that problem with the plants? Is it spreading still, or is it stopped? And do any of the lower leaves show that same kind of um, damage? Uh, one one of the ones that we voted on was White Widow by uh, Auto White Widow by Dutch Passion. So that one that one is that's one of the ones I'll definitely be growing. So Auto White Widow by Dutch Passion. That's one of the autos. I still I'm still deciding what are the what are the autos I want to do this this run. I'm thinking I might do some fast buds just because I know they finish very quickly. Oh yeah, we both started flower in 420. That is pretty cool. Just reading up here, see if I miss anything. Okay, cool. Yeah, if it stopped, then I wouldn't worry about it, Nos. Looks like it's good then. Oh, you mean this bigger? That's that's what you meant, right? The race. I'm, I'm gonna. I want to adjust something again because it's still not quite. See, that's not quite what I see. Hold on a second. Let me see. What do I, what do I have that's different on this? Oh, okay, that's not what I wanted. There we go. All right, cool trying to get the whole thing in there that's at least the part that's important actually I gotta I gotta make this a little bit smaller no actually I'm gonna make me a little bit smaller let's take me down to about there there we go that way I can keep this the size I had it right about there come down a little bit I don't need to see that part come on All right, I think that's about right. Cool. Hey, have a good night, Nas. Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate it. I'm going to check right now, James. Yep, got it. I'm going to go let me go ahead and send that out right now so I don't forget. Here is the free copy of Grow pot cheaply. Going to attach this really fast for you. And where did I put that at again? Oh, that's right. Got to go here. My novels. And I think it's in here. Alright, cool. That's attaching right now. Should only take a second. Oh, shit. Me from That's my wife playing Call of Duty. Oh, if you guys hear. All right, cool. So I just I just sent that out to you. So you should you should get that you should get that any minute now. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and do this race. If you guys want to enter this race, this isn't be for uh, for nothing. This is just a for fun race. If you guys want to do the for fun race, exclamation point play. If you guys have any if you guys have any questions for me that about growing marijuana or whatever, feel free to go ahead and ask that uh, question in the room. Just type three at marks before the question, and I'll answer it after the race. All right, we got ten seconds to start. Here we go.
go. Two more, one more, and we're off. Let's see who comes out first. Oh, look at that Sin. Sinomax flying through the thing. And who looks like three people look at the same time. Look at that. It's hard to tell who came out first. Ozzy, IW, and Cinemax all just smashed out of there first. Whoa, I, IW just took off on that thing. Oh, wait, who got stuck, though? All right, so now we're going through the pinheads. Who's coming through the pinheads first? Oh, that's that's actually a blue neck, so that, that guy's not actually racing right now. Oh, James comes out first, enters into the second pinheads. Who's coming out of these ones first? It's hard to tell. Oh, it looks like I did. Oh yeah, look at that on my head right now. And we're entering to the third pinhead, the third pinheads, and oh look at here comes Job Walker though. He just smashes through them. Oh yeah, he takes first. Boom. Oh wait, he got stuck on something though. He got stuck on a uh, what do I call those again? <laughs> the things that pop up, pop a mole things. I forget what those are called. Oh, I took the lead again. How far? Are you, how far is James behind me now? James is right behind me though. I got stuck. Oh, I hit the. At the berm. Whack-a-moles, that's what I call them. Oh, I got stuck on a whack-a-mole there a little bit. Looks like Ozzy. Wait, is Ozzy from a last... Why is your name blue? Uh, I mean, oh, maybe you won this one before? Uh, who's coming out of this? Looks like I'm coming out. I might win this one. Go, yeah, there we go. Oh, I got smacked by a whack-a-mole. Lemonhead takes the lead. Entering into, I think, the final pinhead. Oh, look at that Ozzy, though. Oh, Ozzy gets stuck on a pin. Oh, look at that Hot Dog, though. Wait, where did Hot Dog go? That was weird. You see that? Hot Dog just, like, vanished. He must have fell to his death, maybe? That was weird. Ozzy took first now. Ozzy's going around the berm. Passes the Whack-A-Moles. And looks like Ozzy takes the win. I'm not sure what happened to Hot Dog. That was weird. I saw Hot Dog flying. It looks like he's about to take, looks like Hot Dog is about to come in, like he's about to take over the lead. Wait, I don't even see Hot Dog in the race, though. That's weird. I, I saw his name. Did everyone see his name? I saw Hot Dog's name. He, like, flew, and then he just, like, vanished. Like, his his marble just went right into the ground and, and then vanished. Oh, maybe he lost connection or something. Oh, no, he's still here. Hot Dog's still here. I don't get it. I don't see your name even in the thing now. Oh, you died? Is that what happened? Does it does it does it not show me the deaths anymore? So yeah, you must have flew off. You must have flew off the track. All right, we'll do another one. Oh yeah, see it shrinks it down every time. So every time I got to regrow it like that. Well, that's kind of retardo. Oh well, not a big deal. Yeah, good job, good job, Ozzy. The whack-a-moles. Yeah, yeah. If you get, if you get, yeah, if you get on top of a whack-a-mole, they can launch you off the track, <laughs> launch you to your death. <laughs> so yeah, exclamation point, exclam exclamation mark, play if you want to enter the race. Another one, another one for fun. I'm going to see if anyone asks a question. I think autos are going to take over the market soon, especially when plants become legal in all states. I, I don't think I don't think autos will, will ever take over because I think there's always going to be this. Even if autos ever do become as good as photos, they're still not as good as photos. Um, there are some autos that will give you as good of results but it won't it won't do it on a consistent basis um, but there, there are some strains that are really really nice and they, they give you good yields and they, they finish fast or at least they finish fast enough but I think that the ability to clone is going to keep photos always relevant so even if autos ever just get so good like they surpass photos even people will still want to grow photos because you can clone them indefinitely for free um, you, you can't you, like it's really hard to beat that the power of cloning. You can't clone autoflowers like that, to where you can where the, where the where the clones will come out 
and grow just as fast and everything and just as big. But with the audit, with with photo periods, you can do that. You can take clones and then you can grow all those clones out, and it's all free, um, except for maybe the cloning gel you want to use. That stuff lasts a long time. So you can, you know, and also with cloning, you know you're getting the exact same phenotype. You're pretty much, you know, you might get a few different variants, but pretty much it's going to be the same thing. And so you get a lot less uh, vari variance within that strain that you're growing when you do clones. Whereas with autoflowers, the only way you're going to be able to cut the price down is you're going to have to make your own seeds. And the problem with making your own seeds is they're not as reliable. Uh, you're going to get some funky growth more often. So therefore, it's always going to be more expensive you know, to buy seeds than to do clones. Do I have any LED lights that I don't use and can send me to New Zealand and I'll pay the shipping? Now, I, I do I do not. Uh, we just gave away a light. IT someone someone donated a light and we gave that away. Um, when, like I have so many people that want my used lights that if I ever get used lights, they're sold instantly. People buy them like right away. Uh, like right now, uh, someone is buying my... Um, my mega star that I no longer sell it's been replaced with the mega but they're buying my my used mega star that I was growing with and that sold like right away for 500 bucks so yeah my used lights don't stay around very long it's actually really hard for me to get you most of the used lights I have are mine they're the ones that I grew with and that's why I have them uh, it's very rare that I actually get lights sent back from somebody else that that I can resell as a used light but I, I do have a couple I think right now that have a minor issue like a, a driver needs to be replaced or something and I'll sell that as a used light even though it's pretty much brand new um, but because it has an issue with it and I have to fix it real quick you know yeah basically basically refurbished all right cool about to start this race Mm. Josh is on it. Josh is gonna. I'm gonna rob. I'm gonna rob with Josh real quick. I'm gonna. I'll rob for a hundred this time too. We're feeling confident. Let's do this. Let's let's get this robbery done. Deepwater culture versus cocoa. Plus pluses and minuses. Honestly, I can't think of any pluses with deepwater culture right now. I did that for. I did that for years in the past. Uh, it's actually it's actually how I well I started off with I tested out cocoa but I didn't use it correctly. My first grow was was cocoa and soil. I did I did a couple plants in soil, a couple plants in cocoa, and the cocoa was a lot easier to uh, maintain. But I was treating cocoa like soil back then because I didn't know any better, so I was treating it just like soil. Uh, either way, it was it was a much more forgiving on a on a new grower, and so I had better results with the cocoa. And and then I got in uh, after several grows and uh, kind of figuring out cocoa more and soil more I then decided to, to try deep water culture I really liked the uh, kind of the scientific aspect it felt like you know felt like I was a scientist like I was mad scientist cooking up some shit or something it's, it's what it felt like at least so I got really into that for a while but it got really old very quickly um, I you know once I started expanding my grow and I had several you know deep water culture buckets going at a time and I had to check every one of those every day and, and just the pH I'm like this sucks um, so then it's like, well, the, the option from there is recirculating deep water culture where you want to use a, a, a pump and everything and you want to pull the water through all your buckets. That, that's much easier to, to maintain than doing individual buckets once you get to that point. Anyway, I just got sick of doing it. It got really old really fast. So deep water culture, the main negatives for me is the amount of time it takes to do it. You really got to be consistently on your plants and working with them. Uh, you want to, you want the, the biggest thing, the biggest problem to deal with is root, um, the root slime. That's a really big issue. And so to, to prevent that, you can use like bleach in the water or you can use peroxide in the water. Uh, but even then sometimes it's still an issue, but usually the, the, if you keep your temperatures somewhat cool and then you want to get a, then you want to, eventually you want to get a chiller. That's the best way to keep your roots nice and happy is a chiller. But anyway, just, it got a pain in the ass. And then I discovered how to actually grow in cocoa because I kept I, I always did more than one thing I was like did some plants in deep water culture did some plants over here in soil did some plants over here in cocoa once I learned how to properly use cocoa that is to water every day to runoff 
I started getting the exact same results I was getting with Deep Water Culture. That is very rapid growth, very big buds. You know, everything I was used to with Deep Water Culture, I was now getting with cocoa. Once I realized how to grow with cocoa properly, that is, that is flood, or, um, flood to waste or whatever you want to call it, uh, drain to waste, whatever, you water every day to run off and then that, that's, that water's you know, run to waste. You don't, re, you don't reuse that water, it just goes out into your garden outside or something. In your, in your grass, whatever you want to use it for, your trees. Once I started growing that way, then I started getting the exact same results I used to get with deep water culture. And so I was like, this is much easier. It Less time every day. It's super easy. Anyone can learn how to do it. And that's how I've been growing ever since. I still do experiments here and there, but that's been my stable way of growing now for years. And that's what I teach in my grow book. So grow pot cheaply. If anyone's interested in my grow, in my grow book or in my... Um, my free grow course, there's the link right there. That will take you to my free grow course, which is a video course that's all free. But I also have my grow book on there for $7 if you want to grab it. But yeah, that's long answer, but hopefully that is a good answer. I, 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 would, challenge, I would challenge anyone on that I, uh, LW. Is it IW or LW? It's, it's hard to tell whether that's a lowercase L or a capital I. <laughs> But um, I'm, I'm going to assume it's LW, and then you can correct me if it's wrong. I never got faster growth with deep water culture. And I, I would challenge anyone to a race on that one. That is, we can use the exact same strain, the exact same, exact same clone, and then do a race. And I guarantee you I'll finish at the same time. It'll be a nice big fat grow and it'll finish at the same time as deep water culture will. Any ideas how to make your own flood tray? Yeah, you could um well I think you're okay, I think you're asking like homemade homemade rather than buying the actual flood trays you have to drill a hole in and stuff like that. And do are you are you want to using it, are you gonna use it for you know fill it up and drain it like that kind of flood tray, or you just want it for a runoff like I use I just I just use it for runoff, so what I used to do, and it works okay, is I used to take like two by fours and build build a uh, rectangle or square shape that you want your flood tray to be like with two by fours, and then and then nail those down or or glue them down however you want to do it to a um, to plywood or something that you know a piece of wood that's not too not too heavy nail that down to a piece of wood so that the it's, it makes the proper square you want and then you could take panda plastic and put it inside that so basically you're making like a little uh, the two by fours act like the walls and the piece of wood acts like the floor but that's not waterproof that's not gonna hold water so then you put the plastic in there you can you can also use that swimming that swimming pool plastic they sell you know that that plastic they sell to make your own ponds and things like that uh, Panda plastic works, but it's it, it can tear a lot easier. So if you get that swimming pool type of plastic, that works that works a lot better. Then you want to just you know press it down all the corners really good, and then fill that up with water and make sure it all is settled good, and then and then vacuum it out, or just make sure it's all settled down by putting some weights in the corners. Like you can put some little waterproof weights in the waters and in, in the corners. Don't use something that's like metal that will rust or something in water. Just something that you know a hard hard plastic, something that has a little bit of weight to it, and weight weight down the corners. And then that will be good for runoff. Then you put your plants in there, and all your runoff will go into that. The reason why you, you want to use that piece of wood on the bottom is so that it stays nice and level. And then I like to put one one little piece of wood shimmied underneath one side, so I have a slight angle to it. I do the same thing with the actual with my actual flood trays. So my flood trays in my room, I have a two by four on one side, so my flood tray is at a slight angle. So all my water runs to one side of my flood tray. And that, that allows it, it makes it really easy for me to, to use my wet vac and vacuum up my runoff. And then I have another pump that I put inside my wet vac after I'm done vacuuming and vac wet or pump that outside. That went out to, that went out to grab the wet vac and take it outside every day. Well, rather, now my wife, that way my wife doesn't have to do that. So she can just put the pump in there and pump that. Anyway. Hope that answers the question. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. Deep water culture and recirculating deep water culture will grow faster than soil, but it will not grow faster than than cocoa. If you grow in cocoa the way I do, because I, I, the way I grow in cocoa is hy, is hydroponically. So I water every day to runoff. I, matter of fact, I water three times a day with the drip system, and uh, so it, it gives you the same results. I, I, I can grow plants just as fast with my deep water culture, or just as fast with my my cocoa method as I can with deep water culture. I highly recommend if you haven't tried my my cocoa method, I highly recommend trying it. Again, the free grow course and I teach I teach my growing method is here. That's the link to it. Do I think that carbon filters will remove smell completely even if you exhaust it into lung room? Do you mean like living room? I don't know what you meant to type there. Lounge room or something? I'll, I'll assume you meant some other room in the house. doesn't really matter what room it is. Carbon filters can get rid of smell quite quite well. So um, some, people, so, some people swear that they get rid of all the smell. I don't know. I've never used it. I don't care about the smell. Like I, I, I grow legally, and I don't really care what my neighbors think. If my neighbors don't like the smell of weed, that's tough on them. They have to get pretty close to the house to smell it anyway, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, it, it should it should get rid of the smell. I mean, people swear by it, so. I do know that um, what I have done, I have tried this and it works, is I take a big carbon a big sheet of carbon filter uh, that you can buy you can buy like Walmart sometimes. It they, they basically are they basically slip inside of a type of filtration air filtration system. And I take that big sheet of carbon filter and I put it on the back of a big 20 inch fan, like a box fan, turn the fan on high so it sucks and sticks to it. And then while you're smoking, if you blow your smoke into the back of that fan so that it has to pass through the carbon filter, it reduces the amount of smell from smoking so much. Just by doing that, you can like get rid of a lot of the smell. Do I find that autos will grow longer, that is, take longer to mature if your pots are bigger with, with, uh, with ore medium? Do you mean one medium? I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know what ore medium is unless you meant to type one. So the only trick I found over the years to get autos to, to go a little bit longer and get a little bit bigger and therefore get, you know, get, get a little bit more yield out of them is my, so for the first 10 days, feed with bloom. But only the first seven to ten days feed with bloom. That helps the roots grow fast and big. And then switch to grow. Keep feeding with grow until they finish stretching. So when they start to flower and they start to stretch, keep feeding grow. Once they finish stretching, then switch to bloom. That one little trick right there will get you like an extra 10 to 20 days um, out of your autoflowers, which is a significant amount of weight difference. All right, cool. So if you have any more questions, feel free to ask them. We're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and start this race. You have 10 more seconds to start if you want to enter the race. This is just for fun. There's no prize for this one. Exclamation mark play. And the race is on. Let's see who wins this one. Who's going to come off this ramp first? Slow motion. Who comes off the ramp first? Uh, that looked like a tie between Job and Mick to me. Looked like, or is that Job? Oh, come on, follow the. There we go. Is your name Job Walker? I imagine. I imagine it's Job, not Job. Yeah, Job would make no sense. <laughs> I don't know why I was calling you that. Job Walker makes more sense. All right, here comes Mick. Looks like Mick's gonna come out of the butthole first. Actually, this one is not a butthole. This this is just a green, a green hole. So maybe that's like, uh, I don't know, a golf hole or a golf hole. That doesn't sound as cool, but whatever. He came out of the golf hole first. Oh, he gets stuck on a whack-a-mole. Oh, he flies to his death though. There goes Mick. He is now dead. Sorry, Mick. Into the clouds. Actually, you're not technically you're not technically dead. You have fallen into the infinite clouds. 
So you're just going to keep falling for the rest of your existence, forever and ever. So I imagine you'll eventually die. You'll starve to death, right? Because I don't know how you're going to eat if you're just falling through clouds. You might be able to get some moisture if you keep your mouth open. So in about three days, you'll probably die from dehydration. Sorry about that, Mick, but it looks like you will be dead in three days. Someone else just fell to the death. I don't know who that was, but it looks like they just fell to the death. And ITZ or LTZ, one of the two, well, probably, probably L. LTZ is in the lead. And he falls into the into the strainer, into the into the oil green oil pan. This kind of looks like grass, sort of, huh? Yeah, this looks like grass to me. Cool. So we're we're basically flying around in grass. It, oh, these guys are neck and neck. Tie stick and and its. I'm just gonna say its. It might be an L, but now it's its. Tie stick and its back back to back, doing tricks off the off the wall here. Ooh, there there was a kickflip. There was a verse 183. I don't know what all those tricks are called. Whatever they're called, they're doing them. Oh, wait, here comes LW, though. Oh, and he passes the Steve completely. And he passes the berm. He hits a whack-a-mole, though. He gets stuck on a whack-a-mole. Lemonhead comes. Oh, wait, Lemonhead out of nowhere comes up. Second place now. Oh, but I, or LW, takes the takes it there. Third place is, is it, it looks like. Fourth place. Here comes, here comes Diggin'. Oh wait, what happened to uh the guy there's Josh. Oh Josh must have got stuck on the Steve. He took a while to come back. He took a while to get here. How come it's not showing me the uh the people that died? Remember how it used to show, you know, the red people over here, the nicknames? The red ones would be the dead people. Now it doesn't show the dead people. I gotta figure out why that changed. Good job though. And there's the winner. Dun, 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 dun. All right, hold on, let me see. Where are the settings at? I want to see why that's that way. Cause see here, these are the guys that that were just qualified because they died. Mick, Shammy, Job, and James all died. Let's see here. How do I show them? Let me see. Here. Show race results. Uh, race menu. Maybe under settings. Oh no, I can't go into settings now. Hold on. Customize. No. Hmm. I'm trying to see where those settings are. Here's our local stats. Oh, you know what we could do? Here's what we can do. So there's a reason why you won. So LW1, if you want to, uh, LW, if you want to type in the next track, type in exclamation point vote and then the number. So I'll, like 22, for example. So if you type in exclamation mark vote and then the number of the track you want to race, here's all the here's all the, all the the tracks here. Pixel's nice. Pixel's is number 11. I haven't done, I don't think I've done Cosmic Chaos. Look, at there's no time for Cosmic Chaos. That's number 13. And so here's all the races here. All the tracks, rather. So if you see any of those tracks that look interesting, you want to type uh, type a number in there. Number 17, all right. Then I'm going to click your, your track. So if you win the race, you get a chance to pick the next track if you want to. So he chose the track, and now we're going to race the track that the winner chose. So that gives you a reason to win. So even though we're playing for fun, there's still a prize. You get to choose the next track we race on. That's kind of cool. If you want to enter this one, it's exclamation mark play. And I'm going to join. There we go. So how do I make it to where I can see? I might have to, do, I might have to go to settings after this race because I, I don't know where the settings are. But I saw the settings before, though. That was kind of cool. So I'm going to try that. After we're done with this race, I might go to the settings and see if I can't figure out how to show. For some reason, it's not showing the uh, people that died anymore. I like to be able to see that. Yeah, subs. It, it, it should be there under the... Uh, so on the YouTube video subs, I have I have my Twitch link to this to this stream. And I put it as I put it as a pinned comment, so it, sh it should be right there in the comments as a pinned comment. Let me go ahead and check. 
Yeah, so it's there as a pinned comment, and also it should be in it, it should be in the uh, description. Let me see if it's not in the description. Okay, maybe it's not in the description. But it it isn't it isn't. I did do it as a pinned comment though. See, why are people asking me what's the the Twitch channel when it's right there? They don't even check. Like, they leave a comment and they don't even check my pen comment. What the hell, folks? What's going on there? What's going on there, Rich from YouTube? He asks, what's the Twitch channel? It's the one that's right there above what you just typed. But anyway, I'll go ahead and post it to him so he knows what it is. What I should do really fast before I forget, give me a second here while we we'll wait for everyone to join this race. I'm going to go over to my YouTube channel. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and add that link. Let's see here. Where do I do that again? I go to other features. Customize channel. I think that's where I go. YouTube's always changing everything. <laughs> it's hard to follow. Because they're always changing everything up. So you got to refine where they put everything. All right, it's taking forever to freaking do its thing. There we go. Ah, this was so easy. Can I go back to the old version? I want to use the old version. It was much easier. Okay, this is not what I wanted to do. Ah, uh, let's see here. Hold on. Let's probably do this later, but I want to figure it out. There, there you go. Classic. I'm just going to go to the classic one because I don't know where it's at in the new one. I don't feel like figuring it out. The old one is so easy. You just click on channel, then there, there it is. You have all the things you want to set. Upload defaults, booms right there. Super easy to find. Catch my live streams on Twitch. Cool. Sorry about that. Just want to get that added to the YouTube thing so it's always there by default. And now it is. So now when I post other videos, that link will always be in the description as well. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and get this race started unless there's any questions. I don't, I don't know who Cody is, uh, LW. I don't really keep up on, on a lot of other growers on YouTube and stuff. I wanted to grow using no nutrients. How effective would using Epsom salts, guano, potash, charcoal be? And what? Well, how is that using no nutrients? Those are nutrients. <laughs> I think what you mean is you want to do all, all organic. Is that what you mean? Because those are all nutrients. Epsom salts is nutrients. Guano is nutrients. Uh, potash is nutrients, and so forth. So um, for all organic, I have a really cool video for that. Check out my. Um, it's called here. Hold on. Let me just let me just find it for you real fast. So if you guys are ever wondering how to search someone's channel on YouTube, here's how to do it. So you go to you go to their YouTube channel. Um, okay. So in this case, I'm just going to find myself this way by typing in my YouTube channel. I'm actually curious if it shows up. Yeah, it does. Cool. So you go, you go to the YouTube channel that you want to search on, and you click on this little search icon right here. Bam. And now you can search just their channel. So we're going to search for organic. So how to, how to, how to organic hydro cocoa, this one right here. And I also, I also have this one. This, was, this one here, I think this is my newer one. 
Yeah, this one right here. LED.com. Links are in the description of this video. Check them out. In this video, we're going to learn how to grow hydroponically. So anyway, this was one you want to check out. I go through all the different stuff you can use and different substitutes and things like that. I'm going to post it. There's the link. So that, that video is really good. And that will answer your question. I go through alternative things you can use for getting all the stuff you want organically. A lot of the stuff you can actually get from down to earth. It's very affordable and it's all powdered base. So you can do like um, lag lagbanite is a good PK booster, for example. But I, I go through the different things you can use in that video. How do you handle the humidity when having an autoflower flowering and a photo period in veg? I, I keep my humidity at 55 during – so if I have any plants that are flowering, I just lower my – I keep my humidity at 55, so it works really good for everything. You know, the vegging plant is fine at 55, and the flowering plants are fine at 55, so it's a really good – that's usually what I do. Like, whenever I go into flower, I, I lower my humidity down to 55 anyways, but if I have any plants that are flowering, then the flowering plants take the priority. If I'm only vegging plants, there's no flowering plants and just veg, I'll let my humidity go up to 70. That's fine. All right, cool. So if you guys want to join this race for fun, give you guys give you guys just a little bit more time. It's exclamation mark play to enter the race for fun. And then the winner gets to choose the next track. Yeah, down to earth is really good stuff. I use their um, for a lot of my outdoor plants. I use BioLive. I think that's what I think that's what it's called by Down to Earth. So it's basically a you know it's a full a full a full organic powdered nutrient that offers everything the plants need, but it also has their added root zone to it basically. So it has all the um, beneficial microbes added to it. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and get this race going. Got 10 more seconds to enter. Exclamation mark play. All right, cool. All right, it started. We're going down. Who's who's going to bounce off this thing first? Looks like Tie Stick and Cuban. Who lands first? Cuban lands first, but Tie Stick lands down farther. Uh, who's bouncing down now? It looks like Damed. Oh, but Venno comes out. Look at that. Venno comes out first. Boom, there we go. And he goes left. No, he goes right. Oh, he does a little trick off the thing, but that might that might have cost him some, some time there. Looks like Cuban might, might come out of this one. Let's see. Oh, and Venno falls to his everlasting perpetual fall. You will probably dehydrate in the next three days. Cuban Surfer. He's got, oh, he's in this, look at this, look how small this is, this is weird, I never saw this one, the tiny little track, there he goes though, Cuban Surfer, in first place, second place, is Dane, Cuban jumps into the stick board, what, I've never seen this one, what the hell, we're all sticking to the board, is that it, is that the ending? What happens after this? I don't understand. <laughs> so, okay, I guess that was the ending. That's an interesting ending. I never saw that before. We just stuck to a board. So, Joe Walker is the winner. I'm going to go to settings real quick, see if I can monitor one, windowed. Okay, I guess there's nothing here. Huh. Audio. Oh, here we go. Sound effects. I'm going to turn this up. Input. This doesn't, none of this does anything. There's no such thing as speed boost. This does nothing. Yeah. Okay. We'll go back to race menu. Give Job a chance to choose the next race. 
So here's all the different tracks. If you want to, Job, if you want to choose the next track we're going to play, it's uh, exclamation part vote or exclamation mark vote and then whatever number. So let's say 22, for example. Yeah, that's how I usually that's how I usually do it. Sub. The only time I don't water several times a day, that, that's three times a day, is if I'm watering by hand. If I'm watering by hand, I water once or twice a day, just because it's a pain in the ass to do otherwise. <laughs> really, just just because it's it's easier if I water by hand. But most of the time, I'm watering on a drip system. Like right now, we're about to do the next grow. We'll be watering on a drip system. If I do organic, we usually make it by hand because the organic nutrients is really clog up the pumps and stuff. Um, but when I grow a cycle flower, which we'll be doing this time, la la the last grow was an organic grow. By the way, that was a 1.8 pound plant organic grow. It's really hard to make organic grows big like that um, when you're doing hydro organic. I should say, when you're doing hydro organic, it's really difficult. Anyway, um, this round will be back to cycle flower nutrients again. And using psycho platinum nutrients, I do a drip feed. It's really important to understand something, though, about when you water several times a day. I don't water several times a day to run off. Only once a day to run off. The other times are with just a little bit of water, just enough to keep it from drying out. So on my drip system, for example, I use the straight quarter-inch tube going right into my plant. I don't use a dripper. It's just a quarter-inch tubing that waters my plant. The first two times it waters, it's only watering with like five to seven seconds very short amount of time that, that is it doesn't water with enough water to get runoff it's just enough to keep it from drying out uh, because they drink a lot of water uh, and then the last watering I water with enough time on it to get me runoff to make sure I get the runoff for that last feeding what and I've, I've kind of figured out over time I pretty much know it's like five seconds five seconds 20 seconds I know that's gonna give me runoff with like three to five gallon pots even with a bigger pot sometimes that's enough and so basically what you want to do is you want to monitor your runoff every day. Start with like 555, five, 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 5 seconds, 5 seconds, 5 seconds. You're probably not going to get any runoff. Then go 5510. Five, you probably won't get any runoff. Then go 5515. Five, Keep doing that until you get runoff the next day. Once you get runoff the next day, then you know you found the right you found the right times. If you're getting too much runoff, you need to back off the last one because you only want a little bit of runoff. You don't want a whole bunch. Well, you, you can have a whole bunch if you want to. It just makes it more work for you. You're wasting nutrients, you're wasting water, and you're wasting your time having to vacuum up that much more water. So, Yeah, for whenever I grow organically, um, I use liquid CalMag. If, if, you want, if you want organic, they do sell liquid organic CalMag. So uh, General Hydroponics, for example, has a organic liquid cow mag. So it's, it, it doesn't last as long, like as far as how long it'll stay good for. So you want to use it, you know, within like a year, maybe even less than that. So buy, buy a smaller bottle, but that's what I use. I, in fact, I don't, I don't even care. If I'm, if I'm growing organically, I just use regular cow mag because it doesn't really matter. It's just a, it's just a mineral. It's not really a big deal. But if you're really die hard about being all organic and that's, I don't know, if we just really want to be all organic and that's what you're, that's what you're all about, you can buy the liquid organic CalMag. All right, so if I choose, I think I'm going to choose, I'm going to do one we haven't done before. Let's see here. Um, what's one we haven't done before? Eye of the Storm. Let's No, that doesn't sound good. Leap to remember, that sounds interesting. Let's try leap to remember. Here we go. Yeah, so if you water more than once a day by hand, sub, just make sure that the only one watering per day is going to be the one to run off. The other waterings are just to keep it from drying out. So try watering just one just try watering just once a day to run off. If that's enough and your pot doesn't dry out too much then that's that's fine but if it if it does start to dry out too much then you have to water it you know to keep it from drying out water it another time just enough to keep it from drying out I rob two hundred. Right, I'll, I'll join you I'll join you there Josh I'll do I I rob I'm at exclamation mark rob for 200 
Let's take let's take this bank for all it's got. Let's keep on winning more and more ducats. So I add cow mag from day one platinum. So the very first day that I start watering my plant, I'm watering with three milliliter three milliliters of cow mag per gallon of water. But that's using my system. That's not soil. So if you're using my system of growing, that is growing in cocoa with LEDs, three milliliters per gallon. If you're growing in uh, cocoa but using HPS, I would only do two milliliters per gallon. And if you are growing in soil, maybe in, in, in HPS, maybe still two milliliters of gallon should be fine. All right. Oh, this one looks interesting. Let me see here. Let me click on this and get everyone's names. So we're at we're at ten thirty now. We're getting a little bit a little bit later. Make this full screen. There we go. Cool. So yeah, if you want to enter the race, it is um, just for fun. Exclamation mark play. I don't know. I don't. I don't use filters. Uh, rub my meat. I, I. I'm growing legally, so I don't care if my neighbors smell smell my stuff or not. I've been doing that for years, so I don't. I don't try to not have my house smell. I don't care. In order to smell it, you have to be within like, you know, you have to pretty much be right next to my house to smell it anyway. It doesn't really travel that far, so I'm not too worried about it. You know, I, I don't think my neighbors ever smell it anyway because they never get that close to my house. But if you are worried about that and you're trying to keep it stealth for whatever reasons, hopefully legal reasons, but whatever those reasons are, I would really look in and research the filter you want to use. Make sure there's, you know, go, go to 420magazine.com, read some threads. Because, uh, there you go. Go to 420magazine.com, read some threads about, you know, about that subject. You know, there's a lot of fellow growers there that will tell you what has worked for them and what doesn't work for them. Also, your nose is probably going to be too uh, too familiar with it, so I would invite a friend over and just see if they say anything. Or, or invite a family member or friend over. Like, after you have everything set up and growing and you got your, fil your filtration system going, invite someone over and just see if they smell weed or not. See if they can smell it. Gotcha. That's a really good test. Uh, see if they smell it outside first and then see if they even smell it if they come inside. But you you, don't, you want a really good filter. You want a you want a you want a fan, an inline fan that moves a lot of air per hour. The CPM's got to be. You want a really high CPM, so you want to move a really a lot of air, and filter it out. All right. So this is gonna be the last race for the night, and then I'm gonna get going. Actually, I gotta get going right now. Sorry guys. Double piece. I'm not feeling good all of a sudden. I'll catch you guys next stream though.